Good morning, guys. Good morning, Ben. It is Good Friday, April 7th, 2023. It's nice in the sun, Benny. Mm -hmm. That's like 10 degrees warmer. That's where we left off yesterday. Saw me put that drainage pipe in. That is all sloped just slightly more than an eighth of a pitch. And that's going to continue through and over and down the right side there but we stopped it there for now next thing we're going to be doing is building that wall along the edge of the house that i was telling you about we have to build a wall it goes from here down to the end and that's just one block high with a cap and all that's going to do is allow us to backfill up higher but that block is going to hold the the fill material back so that it's not resting against the house that's necessary in a in a position like this because you don't want to have all that material up against the house where it can freeze and move and push on the um the the kickboards and all that stuff so that needs to go in that's the first thing and that's going to determine our our height for our pavers to slope so once we get that in we can actually backfill to the correct height because right now we don't have a guideline yet so the top of that wall is going to be that guideline so before we get set up and do that wall i'm going to backfill the rest of this drainage pipe so this is the highest point of our drainage pipe you see we're just a little bit more than an eighth Another one. And we got the same over there, but it's all buried with rocks, so that has our nice slope. It's going to be on the back side of our backfill and it's going to collect any water that may shed down away from the house in the subgrade and on the pavers and it's going to take it and divert it around to the side of the house. It's an absolutely gorgeous day and that's a gorgeous view. Trees blooming, leaves are going to be coming out pretty soon. I love that time of year. Everything comes to life. Welcome back to everyone who's been keeping up with this project. We're on to building that wall I was explaining up along the edge of the house. We don't want our backfill material resting on the house per se, so we got to create a barrier, and we're going to do that with the concrete block. But as of right now, we're going to cover the rest of this drainage pipe and then compact this first lift of three quarter inch clean crust stone. Okay, the area has anywhere from four to five inches of stone throughout. We need a couple to three more. So we raked it off. When I say we, I mean me. Ben was busy doing other stuff. Look at there's no plastic anymore but we got our first little lift of stone up to our drainage pipe we're going to compact this and um our up against the house where we're putting the wall is pretty close to where it needs to be for the three quarter so we're going to just compact the entire area that way we can build the wall and then get our three quarter up to our exact height and compact it again this stone is good up to six inches before you have to compact, but we may be hitting seven or eight in some areas, so we just want to do two lifts to be safe. What do you think, dude? The Teco block and Janest really match pretty good. You know? Like some paver manufacturers, like their color tones are just a lot different, but the Teco block and the Janest match pretty good. I love these pavers, bro. Bud, you want to give that thing a compact? Just don't go over that drainage pipe or too close to it because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to shift at all. We'll, once we get a little bit more stone on that, we'll compact the, the drainage pipe area. 
Take one pull today. <laughs> yep. It's the Honda engine. So Ben's going to run around this area a couple times, make sure it's compacted nice and tight. And our next move here you're going to see is we're going to set up our squared off guideline. That's going to show us where we need to lay the concrete block. And it's also going to kind of give us an idea of where the pavers are going to be. So we're going to run the string parallel with the house and we're going for finding the height of the cap on top of the block as well so this string is going to represent a couple things which I will explain here in a minute but this is a very important part of the process and you got to take your time and make sure you get it right all right we got our first squared off line it's running along with the house parallel it is the height of our cap and the, the height of where our paver would be The cap we have is almost 13 inches. So for the guideline's sake, we put it at 13 and a half off the house. And it's that width off of both sides. We have a 1 8 pitch or slope going that way. And we're also, once we lay it, we're gonna have a 1 8 or a little bit more than a 1 8 slope going to the right. So all the water is going to go flow down to the wall side and out towards the side of the yard. 13 and a half. So that's the height of our cap and the back of the cap, beginning of the pavers. So it's marking out a few things for us. And this is how we're going to be able to get to start. Our wall block is six inches and our cap is three. So we need three more inches of stone about no, not three. well two and a half that we need a little bit less on this side so that's what I was saying we had a few more inches to go still we wanted to compact that in a lift so now that we have our guideline set up Benny's gonna be just spreading this stone out to get us within a, a small fraction of where we need to be. We won't be laying this block directly on the three quarter. We're actually going to be screeding the area like we would screed for pavers. So he's getting it within one inch of where it needs to be. And then I'm going to tamp it as you see here. And then I'm going to be setting up those screed rails to my side right there. If you've watched any of my paver videos before, you know how I use those. I set them on our base stone and adjust them properly to the correct slope that I need. And what I'm doing with this one is setting them to that string line. So that's going to help me lay the block in a little bit quicker and easier. I'm going to be putting them on a bedding stone, also hammering them into place. But it gets me really close to the level that I need it to be. If you just lay the blocks on three quarter going from one block to another it just ends up taking a lot of time so setting up your screed pipes and leveling your area off with the smaller crushed stone is really helpful and gets the job done a little bit quicker
so that was the chip stone you saw us dumping there and now we're officially ready to start laying some blocks and even though we're screeded and pretty close to exactly how we want our grade we still want to be able to set these blocks into place you don't ever want to just lay a block down loosely and leave it be you need to set it up higher and then hammer it into place to do the settling that mother nature would do to these blocks in the future you're gonna see as I set these blocks down how much they actually do settle and some people just don't realize that you need to you really need to set them into place if not you're just kinda asking for future problems and it's never fun to have to go back and deal with issues like that End of day three and a half. Three and a half days, Benny. We're looking good. Excavated backfill, drainage is in. We got our first row of block, well, our only row of block along the house in. That just needs to be capped. Then core filled the blocks and the V's of the blocks. And then we put the small chip stone in between the blocks and the uh, AZAC board there or whatever you call that, the plastic trim boards. So that'll allow for, allow for some expansion and contraction without there being pressure on the house. And the other thing you really don't want to happen, if there's going to be a gap here in between the house and the, the cap, if you were to drop something small, it would fall down in there. Our leaves would gather in there, our snakes, <laughs> whatever. Something would find its way. So you got to fill that joint with something. That three, that um, chip stone is what we used. Not bad for three and a half days, bud.
Good afternoon everyone. Today is Monday the 10th of April 2023. What's up bud? What's up? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. These guys have just been on a few time lapses this morning. That's it. I'm talking. Yep, had to get to work. So we're certainly moving along. I think we're at about 10 yards of stone, maybe a little bit more in there already. But the caps are ready to be glued. You saw me trim the edges so that they have a nice flush face for the pavers to sit up against. And we let them dry out because we used some water. So while it was drying out, we got this area graded. Pretty close to where it needs to be. We gotta double check. What we do to check this is we actually lay out our screed rails, our screed pipes, and we kind of dry fit them to make sure that we're at the correct height. And once we are at the correct height, we're gonna compact this three quarter inch stone. And then we'll be able to lay out our pipes and start screeding. But right now, I got a couple of things to do at the end of this wall over here. I gotta put a few blocks in and I'm gonna have Ben start gluing these caps down. This little uh, one block high wall and cap is gonna, like I said, just kind of act as a barrier between the house and this three quarter backfill stone and pavers. It's gonna lock everything in together without putting any pressure on the house. So I'm gonna set you guys up on a time lapse and show you how Ben glues the caps. We like to dry lay everything out, make sure it's good, and then lift and glue and then adhere the cap down one at a time so that you can just follow that line that you set up. So we're just using a regular concrete adhesive. It's made by SRW Products, but there's a lot of manufacturers out there that make a similar product. And it's just meant to adhere two pieces of concrete or stone together. It works really good and locks everything in nice and tight. You just don't be bashful with it. Put some good beads down and it will hold your caps for many, many years. And I'm using my screed rails here. You've seen how we spread out the three quarter as we were um, waiting for the caps to dry. But here is how I'm going to check. I'm laying the, the pipes out and I'm using my level to make sure everything's sloped right and at the correct height. I'm looking to be within a quarter or a half an inch. If it's lower, that's okay because I can add chip stone, but it can't be higher. If it's higher, I have to remove some three quarter inch stone, but none of it was higher. It was all within that one quarter to a half inch range. So I'm good to compact the area. And once it's all compacted, I can actually set up my screed rails to how they're supposed to be and start getting ready to lay some pavers. But that's going to be in the next video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. We're making progress on this project and looking forward to slamming down some pavers and making this front walkway look like a front walkway. So hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. You guys know the deal. Until the next video, God bless. Peace.